Hello and a very good afternoon. It's 12 p.m. You're watching Verdict 2016 with me, Frank Pereira, on Rajya Sabha Television. Let's begin with today's headlines. 83.73% voting registered in West Bengal in the second part of the first phase. ZC releases final figures. Election Commission removes uh, controversial Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar following complaints by major opposition parties. And Congress President Sonia Gandhi to address two rallies in Bengal, one in Birbhum district and the other in Malda. Well, let's begin today's bulletin with news from West Bengal. Well, Congress President Sonia Gandhi is scheduled to address two rallies in West Bengal today. The first rally will be held at uh, Murare in Birbhum district, while the second one will be at uh, Sujapur in Malda district. Voting for the second phase of the six-phase polls will be held in 56 assembly segments on Sunday. Campaigning for these seats, uh, which are spread over six districts of the state, is on in full swing despite the scorching heat. Candidates along with supporters have been holding roadshows, rallies and meetings under the blazing sun as they can hardly afford to be slack in the 11th hour. Meanwhile, the final revised polling percentage in part two of the first phase of Bengal elections have been announced. Over 83% electorate had cast their votes in 31 assembly constituencies spread over three districts in the state. West Midnapur's uh, Narayan Ghat constituency had the highest turnout of 90.62% voters, while voters in Kharagpur, southern seat in the, the district, showed the least interest with a 71.69% turnout. The commission was cautious in releasing poll percentage figures this time around as opposition parties had raised questions over the delay in declaring the final voter turnout in the first part of uh, the first phase of the assembly elections. Well, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has blamed the centre's indifference for the plight of tea gardens in North Bengal. Addressing a rally in Alipurdaur, Mamta said that uh, the centre had done nothing so far on its promise to give a financial package to improve tea gardens. She also slammed the Modi government for its false statements. <laughs> Meanwhile, the BJP has asked the Election Commission to ensure free and fair polling in the coming phases in West Bengal. However, they also claim that the similar requests earlier have not been addressed. A BJP delegation comprising Union Minister Prakash Javadekar, Party General Secretary Bupendra Yadav, Secretary Siddharth Nath Singh and Om Patak uh, submitted a memorandum to the Election Commission. They said most of the observers are neither visible nor available and are completely incommunicado. Uh, the, they maintained that the party had uh, requested for flag marches and po patrolling in sensitive and extra-sensitive constituencies, but this is not being conducted despite assurances by the Commission. Seeking deployment of central forces, they requested the Commission to order effective steps to stop use of muscle power and take effective steps to create an atmosphere of free and fair elections. Observer or micro-observer ज्यादा विजिबल रहे सेंट्रल फोर्स ज्यादा विजिबल रहे और जहां गुंडागर्दी का निशाना बनाते हैं उम्मीदवारों को भी या हमारे पोलिंग एजेंट्स को भी तो वहां उसके लिए भी सख्त कार्रवाई करने के लिए निर्देश और बहुत सारे नए निर्देश आज दे देंगे ताकि आने वाले पांच फेज में एक फ्री एंड फेयर चुनाव हो यही आज हमारा मुद्दा था here are some poll snippets in Polpuri. Expressing displeasure over incidents of violence in the part two of the first phase of the West Bengal Assembly elections, the CPIM Politburo has urged the Election Commission to ensure free and fair voting in the state. 
CPIM accused TMC of attacking and intimidating opposition voters through violence. The party also submitted a memorandum to the commission in this regard so that the mandate bestowed on it by the constitution was judiciously exercised. Elections are to be held in five more phases, uh, covering 245 assembly constituencies in West Bengal. Controversial Kolkata Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar has been removed from his post by the Election Commission following complaints against him by major opposition political parties. The BJP and Congress had recently moved the Election Commission seeking removal of Kumar, alleging that he was close to West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee and accused him of snooping on opposition leaders, bureaucrats and journalists. The Election Commission appointed Special Flying Squad have seized illegal cash of uh, 57 crore rupees from the five states facing assembly elections with Tamil Nadu leading the list with seizures of 22.75 crore rupees till now. Assam came in second with 12.33 crore rupees having been seized there. In West Bengal, the figure stands at about 11.9 crore rupees while 10.2 crore rupees has been seized in Kerala. Puducherry has uh, seen seizures of about 60.88 lakh rupees. The Election Commission has uh, censured uh, Trinamool Congress leader Anubrata Mondal for violating the Model Code of Conduct. The poll body had earlier issued a show cause notice to the Birbhum District President of Trinamool Congress following complaints against him. A census was issued, a uh, censure, right, beg your pardon, was issued after his reply was not found to be satisfactory. In the meantime, the full bench of the Election Commission held a meeting to review the poll preparedness for the second phase of West Bengal polls on the 17th of April. Let's now move across uh, to South India and get you some uh, news from Kerala. Well, the CPM is contesting against the Congress in Kerala, but in West Bengal, it is fighting the elections with the support of Congress. In an interview to Rajya Sabha Television, CPM General Secretary Sita Ram Yachuri answered questions on how his party is tackling the contradiction. Let's listen in. We are CPM Mahasachiv Sita Ram Yachuri. Sir, there is a lot of CPM where we are fighting in Kerala. वहीं बंगाल में आप एक टेसिट अंडरस्टैंडिंग के साथ चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं इस तरह की बात आ रही है कोई दुविधा नहीं है देखिए ये कि हर हर स्टेट के अंदर क्या है वहाँ की ठोस परिस्थितियाँ उस हिसाब से हमने तय किया कि हमारी चुनावी रणनीति क्या होगी कोई ना कोई फ्रंट है ना कोई एलाइंस है ना कोई अंडरस्टैंडिंग जनता दल यू है वहाँ पे रजत है वहाँ पर आपके नेशनलिस्ट कांग्रेस पार्टी है वहाँ पे जनता दल सेक्युलर है उन वो सब भी अब मिलकर चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं हमारे साथ जी तो मकसद ये है कि त्रिमूल सरकार हटाओ बंगाल बचाओ आसाम का भी चुनाव है आसाम का सीपीएम के साथ बड़ा पुराना संबंध रहा है कई कार्यकर्ताओं ने वहाँ पे बलिदान दिया है और उसके बाद तमिलनाडु में भी हम लोग एक नए फ्रंट के साथ आप लोग अब आए हैं एमडीएम के डीएमडीके के साथ नया फ्रंट बनाया है तो वहाँ पर क्या उम्मीदें हैं सीपीएम को इस बार नहीं अच्छी उम्मीदें हैं तमिलनाडु में तो अब देखिएगा कि ये पीपल्स वेलफेयर फ्रंट जो बना पहले चार पार्टियों का अब कैप्टन भी हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं जी तो इसके साथ एक विकल्प के रूप में अब उभर रहा है तमिलनाडु के राजनीति में ये ड्रविडियन पार्टी से मुक्त एक राजनीतिक विकल्प की जरूरत है और वो विकल्प इस बार खड़ा हुआ है हम समझते हैं कि तमिलनाडु की जनता से उसको स्वीकृति निश्चित रूप से बड़े पैमाने पर मिलेगी तृणमूल के बाद सीपीएम ये बात कहना तृणमूल तो पहली बार तो आई इसके बाद क्या सीपीएम माने <coughs> इसके बाद सीपीएम लोग इसलिए चाह रहे हैं कि तृणमूल हार है और निश्चित रूप से सीपीएम का ही मतलब सरकार बन सकती है अगर तृणमूल हारेगी लेकिन तृणमूल को हराने की बात क्यों आ रही है पिछले ही चुनाव में बड़े पैमाने पर तृणमूल की जीत हुई तो वह परिवर्तन दिया और देखा परिवर्तन क्या है अब उससे अब मुक्ति चाहते हैं तो तो उस तरीके से चल रही है लेकिन बंगा, I mean, बंगाल में हम नहीं समझते हैं कि वो इस तरीके की पिंग पॉन्ग बैटल होगी तो आपको लगता है इस बार प्रदर्शन सीपीएम का सारे स्टेट्स में अच्छा रहेगा हम कह रहे हैं पिछले के मुकाबले में अच्छा रहेगा सीताराम येचुरी का मानना है कि इस बार सीपीएम का प्रदर्शन जिन जिन स्टेट्स में चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं वहां पर बेहतर होने वाला है और इस बार जब इनकी सरकार बनेगी तो एक नई एजेंडा और एक नई 
दिशा के साथ जनता का भला करने की कोशिश करेगी तमिलनाडु चेन्नई से कैमरामैन चेतन के साथ रविंद्र सिंह शोरान राज्यसभा टीवी Meanwhile, in our special focus today, we'll take a look at Calicut district in Kerala. The upcoming polls on May 16th will see a direct contest between the Left Democratic Front and Congress-led United Democratic Front in Calicut. In the previous elections, the Left won most of the seats in the district and are hoping for a whitewash this time around. But the Congress wants to make sure that that does not happen. Yes, ma'am. Calicut in Kerala plays an important role in India's modern history. Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama set foot in Calicut after the first direct sea voyage from Europe to Asia in the 15th century. Vasco da Gama's arrival changed the course of history and India became the gateway to the world's greatest spice growing region and Calicut became the headquarters of the spice trade. We study the suitability of various crops, varieties in different parts of the country. For example, perennial spices like uh, nutmeg or cinnamon or uh, black pepper, it was only in the southern region. And cardamom, that is uh, uh, chota ilaichi. Close to 20 lakh voters will cast their votes in the 13th assembly seats in Calicut. Nearly 1 lakh 27,000 are young first-time voters. More than 95% voters are literate. In the upcoming assembly elections next month, the contest is a direct fight between the arch-rivals Left Democratic Front and Congress-led United Democratic Front. Currently, the Left holds nine seats out of the 13 assembly seats and are confident of doing well this time too. Mountain area of Cold Coast districts. There are rubber agriculturists. They have the less price. They had very, very distress. Then in mid-place mid of the Karika district, there are coconut trees. The Congress claims that the development done by the Chandi government will ensure the party's victory in Calicut. Uman Chandi's ruling period is development period. The golden age of Kerala, UDF period, Uman Chandi's period. Locals believe that a lot needs to be done for the development of the district. And the hike of the price, I mean the consumable goods, that's the main issue now. And uh, uh, of course the corruption. That is, can you hear, I might have heard from everybody. Yeah, unemployment is the major issue facing here in Kerala. The quality of the examination and education is gone very low. The residents of Calicut are hopeful that regardless of which party rules the state, Calicut will get its due after these assembly elections. Ravindra Sharon's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, join me for a chat uh, this afternoon to talk about what's happening in Kerala and how the preparations are going in the state is our correspondent Ravindra Sharon. Ravindra, uh, you know, as far as Kerala is concerned, you've been traveling the uh, length and breadth of Kerala and you've been speaking to leaders from the UDF, from the LDF as well. What is the mood like in both the camps there in Kerala? Yeah, Frank, uh, after the brief break of an unfortunate uh, incident which has happened uh, uh, in Kollam, the, all the political leaders and political parties are now again gearing up for the uh, next round of the election campaign. Uh, as we have spoken to all the leaders, almost all the top leaders of the all different political parties, everybody of them is confident that this time we, they will be able to get the uh, confidence of people and they will be voted to power. On the uh, one side, if we talk of the LDF, they are saying that a lot of nepotism and corruption uh, cases has been happened in this last government of the UDF and they are leveling the allegations and the charges of the corruption and uh, the distress of the farmer and the uh, of the, uh, different segments of society are not happy with the government. These are the allegation levels by the LDF and this is the reason they are confident that uh, this time they will be voted to power. Also, one more thing which going into the uh, benefit of LDF is the, uh, the old culture of the uh, rotation of every five years of this go government in Kerala. Uh, on the other hand, uh, UDF is confident that they have done a lot of remarkable achievement they have uh, done here. As we are sitting in Kochi, the Kochi is the first uh, city of the Kerala where, where solar uh, airport has been started. Also, uh, the Kochi metro has also been started. So they are banking upon the development and progressive work which they have done. Also, the most important issue which we can see right now is the prohibition. The prohibition in the phase-wise manner which has been initiated last year by the Oman Chandi government. Uh, the LDF has already said if they will be voted back to power, they will reconsider the issue. On the on, uh, other side, the UDF is saying that this is the uh, 
big scheme which they have initiated and it will benefit the people of this uh, the whole Kerala state because Kerala has maximum number of maximum amount of consumption of liquor in the rest of the uh, in, in, in the country so this is one of the main issue beside this latex uh, the poor conditions uh, the poor condition of the farmers who are growing rubber tree they are also in distress the coir farmer the coir uh, worker which are working in the coir industry and the cashew industry they people are also in distress because of some uh, excise duty which has been levied against them by the central government. These are the main issues on which the, all the political parties are banking upon and they are uh, doing their campaign around. Uh, 22nd is the day when the... 22nd is the day when the nomination paper will be started. The people, uh, the candidates who are going to be in the fray, they will start filing their nomination paper. After that, we will be able to see some central leader who are coming up and uh, campaigning for their respective, respective candidates and big rallies has been also planned only after that. All right, Ravindra right. Sharon, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining us there with those details and putting things into perspective for us and bringing us up to date with what's happening there in uh, Kerala. It's time for a short break now, but we'll be back with much more from uh, the other pole-bound states. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. I am Ishan Russell. I'm Tracy Shilchi and you're watching News Tonight. Together with the team of our dedicated professionals from across various fields. This is Sham Sundar. Vishal Dahiya. Akhilesh Suman. Frank Pereira from Beijing, China. Kriti Mishra for Raj Sabha Television. We bring to you the news that matters here on Raj Sabha TV. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Let's now move to Kerala's neighboring state of Tamil Nadu, where polls will be held next month as well, and get you the latest from there. Well, DMK President M. Karunanidhi will contest from his uh, native uh, Thiruvarur constituency for the May 16th Assembly polls. He is seeking a successive term from the rural seat. The 92-year-old veteran will also launch his election campaign from uh, Saidapet on April 23rd. Though the party is yet to release the list of its candidates for the 176 seats it is contesting, Karunanidhi's choice of seat has uh, been mentioned in his tour itinerary. He will file his nomination at uh, Thiruvarur on April 25th and also address a public meeting the same day. A five-time Chief Minister, Karnadidi represents Thiruvarur in the outgoing 14th Assembly, dominated by arch-rival AIADMK, which he chose in 2011 after contesting in constituencies from the state capital here for a long time. Well, with five chief ministers in the last five decades from the movie world, the way to political power in Tamil Nadu is through building up star power. Five of the state's chief ministers had their roots in filmdom, while several other actors showed an interest in politics. Let's now take a look at Tamil Nadu's star power in politics. MVM Road in Chennai, the place where movies are made. A street which fans associate with M.G. Ramachandran, Karnanidhi, Jayalalita, Vijay Kant. Larger than life screen personalities who today are leading lights in the theatre of politics. In recent times, Chief Minister Jayalalita is the tallest of them all, having a no less memorable innings as a film star before becoming the AIA DMK chief. AIA DMK is unquestionably the largest party in Tamil Nadu. And as you know, the last election, which has happened about 20 months back, 2014 parliament, we won single-handedly with about 44.3% of the votes. And um, 
we won about 37 out of the 39 constituencies the man close to jailalitha and introduced her to politics mg ramachandran was himself famous for having charted a unique place in both films and politics nowhere in the state you can find these sort of uh, film personalities rather film personalities alone controlling the politics for a very long time the dmk chief is no less a phenomenal presence in both fields as a prominent script writer before taking a center stage in the dravida movement in the state of more recent vintage is vijay kant the dmdk president who is currently the leader of the opposition in the tamil nadu assembly seen as the third axis in state politics vijay kant earned the nickname captain after ltte leader prabhakaran According to political analysts the common public in Tamil Nadu is not just impressed by the film stars but want to see them in their everyday lives as well uh, Karnanadi himself is a well known as a you know script writer and a, you know for uh, the film industry as well and now Vijay Kanth who's the latest uh, you know uh, I mean not not so recent because he's been around for several years now as a politician but who has made a decision of entering into politics and who is positioning himself as an alternative to the AIA and the uh, ADMK and the DMK are having a you know great you know grip over the society here people are talking about the film entry of Vijay who is the, who is also a, one of the leading stars of tamil nadu today uh, once we talked about rajinikanth but it seems almost certain that he is not talking he is not going to take a plunge then there are stars like rajinikanth and sharath kumar watching from the sidelines intermittently making their presence felt in politics keeping the charisma alive for these stars are the many television channels The DMK has the Sun TV, Kalingana TV, AIA DMK has Jaya TV, while Vijayakant owns Captain TV. Perhaps this is an area where national parties like the Congress and the BJP miss out and find their influence limited among the masses. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the severe flash floods in Chennai last November have been called last year's largest natural disaster anywhere in the world in terms of economic losses. But in Tamil Nadu, they are expected to leave an equally big impact in this year's assembly elections as well. Let's take a look at what kind of an impact the floods in Chennai will have on the polls. The recent floods that ravaged Chennai is a huge election issue this time around. The rains were among the heaviest in the last 100 years and the state government claims it was only its timely action that contained the damage. Now the major problem in Tamil Nadu is corruption so very boldly very sincerely we will meet the people uh, and uh, we will face the people and people will favor us. The fact remains that the government has ignored key lessons. In the last 30 years Chennai city has seen floods at least four times. Despite these there have been no attempts to improve the city's drainage system as a result no less than 200 people have died in the floods property worth 20000 crore rupees has also been damaged we are very upset on the uh, fundamentals not being met and uh, not being addressed at the uh, specific point in time and it took a lot of time for the present government also to uh, take steps uh, to rectify it and uh, moreover uh, if you were to look at the other parties as concerned uh, people are uh, very much uh, uh, concerned about the timely help which was not rendered the government found itself in the middle of a raging controversy when even the distributed flood relief materials carried the chief minister's picture on them as far as chennai is concerned floods is one of the recent issues that has affected a large number of people but as far as the tamil nadu is concerned there are two three important issues one is uh, corruption at large level then uh, lack of uh, development chennai had a record rainfall of 452.4 mm in november 1976 last year's floods were no less severe with as much as 264 mm rainfall being recorded in the first 24 hours itself the accompanying lack of preparedness made matters worse now it remains to be seen just what effect will the november rains have in the may elections with ravindra sharan bureau report rajya sabha tv going on to news from pondicherry now tourism is the biggest industry in the election bound union territory this time it has become a big issue with voters who feel the government is not doing enough to promote it yasmo 
Located in the southern part of India on the Coromandel coast of the Bay of Bengal and bound by Tamil Nadu is Puducherry. The history of modern Puducherry dates back to 1673 when Dutch, Portuguese, British and French colonists arrived here. A French colony till 1954, Pondicherry was officially renamed Puducherry in 2006. We should be having foreign tourists coming in which we have not focused yet. I think there is a, a major vacuum which we need to grow in that direction. And the government has to play a very vital role with regard to popularizing our destination in the foreign markets, which I think the, uh, this place needs that push from the government. Once a quiet, sleepy town, Puducherry banks on tourism as one of the main sources of income. More than 7 lakh domestic and foreign tourists visit the Union territory every year. However, the absence of an airport is a huge drawback. Political parties also feel that tourism needs a boost for overall development of the region. I've been hearing that uh, an airport here in Pondicherry would be helpful because we have to come through Chennai. But I think we're enjoying the, the facilities that are here. The but more facilities will help more people to come. More facilities will help for more tourists, sure. This is a union territory. We have a limited revenue. We don't have uh, much revenue. So this, uh, the central government uh, should be a lot of funds. That's what I feel. Uh, they, this uh, government uh, uh, revenue is only excess duty on uh, this uh, liquors, uh, which is apart, we get about uh, something like some. But uh, they have to focus most on tourism sector. This whole government has failed now. The NR has पूरा अब उन्होंने 170 आश्वासन दिया लोगों का ये मैं ये की पूरा नहीं किया अभी तक पांच साल हो गया During these elections local residents are renewing their demand for an airport and also a theme park demands that could play a major role in deciding the fate of political parties depending on their stand on these issues Ravindra Sharon for Rajya Sabha Television Puducherry Well that's it on this edition of Verdict 2016 have a good day